not that long ago we finished up the inaugural cup series race at iowa speedway and it was a crazy captivating race to say the least let's go over it on this week's edition of car on the hauler Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think about the inaugural race at Iowa Speedway? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. All right, so we just finished up a very crazy race at Iowa Speedway. The first race at Iowa in the Cup Series. It was a very entertaining race, to say the least. A very big, pleasant surprise, I would say. Surprise, motherfucker. One of the big talking points coming into the event was tires. A lot of drivers had issues with tires in practice and qualifying. The tire test sounded like it could have been pretty crazy so a lot of drivers and race teams were worried about tires heading into this event and then probably the biggest talking point was the partial repave of iowa speedway heading into its inaugural event apparently they did not have enough time to repave the whole track so they only repaved the bottom half of one and two and three and four Iowa Speedway has always been known as a multi-groove racetrack, but with a partial repave, a lot of us were thinking it was going to be one lane, maybe two. But very early on in this race, these drivers proved how skillful they were by going three wide throughout pretty much the whole race, On especially on these restarts. These restarts were completely crazy today. I guess that's a good segue into the actual breakdown itself of this race we saw a lot of great racing, a lot of great strategy being done in this race. Very entertaining racing throughout the day. I was, like I said, I was very pleasantly surprised. I did not think this was going to be that great of a race up until the tires. Gentlemen, you have my curiosity. Now you have my attention. When I listened more in depth when it comes to these drivers talking about the tire test and the way the tires were falling off, it got me excited that we could potentially have a good race because of either strategy when it comes to the tires or even actually great side-by-side -side action when it comes to the tires. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! And today we actually saw both. We saw great racing throughout the day. A lot of passing drivers that were quick were able to make those passes and get their way to the front. Clean air still, as always, with this car. And I think no matter what with this car, clean air will make a huge difference as it has in the history of the sport. But I think now in the current day, it means even more. But we saw multiple drivers make their way through the field throughout the day on a couple of different occasions like... Christopher Bell, he had to start at the back. He had to move his way through the field a couple of times. Kyle Larson, he had to move his way through the field. Justin Haley, Justin Haley had an amazing day. But the thing that came along with the tires and the strategy and the racing was some tires being blown out. And I love to see this. I applaud Goodyear. Goodyear did an amazing job when it comes to this tire because these drivers really had to pick and choose if they wanted to go really hard at the beginning of the run or near the end of the run if they wanted to push it near the end of the run and try to save those tires as best they can. Overall, it was a very difficult day for both of the Kyles. Kyle Busch, he went out of the race. I'm, I'm still not sure exactly what went wrong with this car. Mechanical failure of some sorts. I thought it was a blown tire, but it wasn't a blown tire because... No tires went down on the car, but something was dragging, leaving up sparks from Rowdy's machine. Kyle Busch had a very fast top 10, top 5 car throughout the day. 
But then easily the best car throughout the day was Kyle Larson. He was very dominant. He went flying through the field when he was on slightly fresher tires than the field. There was no question who the best car in the field was today, and that was Kyle Larson. And as he was coming through the pack, he made a he made a very aggressive move, in my opinion, forcing it three wide off of the corner. And then Daniel Suarez made a mistake, ended up getting loose underneath him, getting in to Kyle Larson's quarter panel, putting Kyle Larson into the wall with Denny Hamlin. Oh, no. Kyle Larson would end up getting some repairs and going back to the garage, coming back onto track. He finished over 30 laps down in the event, but he had the best car, I would say, in the event. Just a very unfortunate for that to happen while he's running through traffic. Kyle Larson was just one of a few drivers that shown like they had winning speed. Another driver was Josh Berry. Josh Berry really impressed today. He was really fast. He was running top five, top three, pretty much the whole entire race. Then he got behind on strategy and was unable to get back to the front. But I'd say he was probably the best forward in the field today, even better than our winner, Ryan Blaney. I'll talk more about Ryan Blaney in a minute. But Josh Berry, he's out here competing for a ride next year. If he hasn't already signed up for a ride next year, He's, he's trying out, essentially, right now to be on, a, be on a good team. Very good performance from him. Chase Briscoe as well. Chase Briscoe was really fast as well for Stuart Haas. But he got way behind on strategy. I think he even went a lap down at one point because of strategy. Let's talk about the end of that race and Ryan Blaney getting his first win of the season. Honestly, with all the incidents and all the blown-out tires throughout the day, I expected a late-race caution. We ended up going green to the end, which was kind of surprising. We were able to see what these drivers were able to do on the longer runs. We only had one other long run in the race, and it ended up getting cut short in the middle of pit stops. I think it was like a, I want to say maybe a 70, maybe even an 80 lap run. In those last couple of laps, you had to see Ryan Blaney weave through traffic, did a great job getting through traffic, but William Byron was closing in those last couple of laps looked like he had the quicker car at the very end but like i said that's probably because of traffic the traffic's always going to fight the leader a little bit harder than the second place driver iowa speedway in this area of the country is very important to ryan blaney and the blaney family you saw it in the post race you saw all the family and friends in the stands wearing the ryan blaney t-shirts it was a cool moment to see Ryan Blaney get the win. Even saw Dave Blaney pop out in between the safer barriers. I love to see that because Dave Blaney was one of my favorite drivers growing up. Ryan Blaney got the job done. Got his first win on the season. I'd say Larson had the best car. I think Bell hurt himself throughout the day and just always had to race from behind. I thought he might have had the second best car throughout the day but Blaney was probably that fourth best car I think Barry was probably third but he had a Blaney had a top five car really great on strategy the end of the race he ran perfectly he was great on the long run a great strategy call by taking the two tires getting Ryan Blaney out front giving him the lead late and then Blaney just did everything he needed to do a very impressive performance especially late on in the event by Ryan Blaney, able to snag his first win of the season and the first ever race at Iowa in the Cup Series is his. Ryan Blaney, who probably would have made the playoffs anyway, has locked himself into the playoffs. That's 10 winners. 10 winners on the season. We still have nine more races until we get to the playoffs. The question is, are we going to get more than six winners? I'd say probably not. We might have Three or four new winners, especially with the Chicago Street Course coming up. And you have Daytona. It's going to be a very interesting next couple of weeks for sure. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. One thing I predicted in my preview video, this was going to be an opportunity for a lot of drivers to have a great run because of just the unknowns. If they hit the setup, the right way if they race the right way a lot of drivers that you don't usually see up 
towards the front, could be up towards the front in this race. I already mentioned Josh Berry and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He was my underdog pick. He ran top 10 most of the day. He got up there because of strategy, but he, but he was able to hold on to his position. Justin Haley, I briefly mentioned, mentioned him earlier, but he continuously impresses me every single week. I think I've mentioned him maybe four or five times on this show so far. He, he's just an amazing, talented race car driver. Uh, I'm just incredibly impressed what he's been able to do with that race team in such a short amount of time. I'm interested to see if maybe he stays with Rick, Rick Ware for the long term and tries to really build this team or if this is pretty much a tryout for him to move over to a team like RFK. Before I get to my final thoughts, I do want to talk about NBC. This was NBC's first race of the season. It was on USA Network for this event. Overall, I was just very impressed by the coverage. I think there was little mistakes here and there, but it's also their first race of the season. I was very impressed. I remember one of the times they were side by side, and I think it was Ross Chastain lost a tire, and they immediately cut back to the race. I really liked to see them doing stuff like that. I love the camera angles they had, the way they commentated, and the best part was that there was an actual post-race show, a very short pre-race, which I'm fine with. We don't need an hour-long pre-race, around a half an hour, 20-minute pre-race is fine with me, but we got an actual post-race show today, and that that was pretty cool to see them interview a bunch of guys and really look into victory lane i really wish we still had the victory lane interview i don't like i'm very mixed when it comes to the victory lane interview versus the front stretch interview because when i'm at the track i really like to see the front stretch interview i think that's cool to see that on the front stretch it gets all the fans involved i understand that but on tv the victory lane on tv the victory lane interview is just way better because you see how hyped he is with the team with all the gatorade and the waters and the the fireworks all that stuff going off in victory lane i also like the way they involved jeff burton jeff burton did similar stuff last year with dale earnhardt jr of course dale earnhardt jr is no longer part of nbc he'll be moving on to amazon prime and turner sports but i liked that they had him do similar stuff that they had him do last year he was on the track checking out the partial repave at one point they had him in the grandstands with the fans i thought that was pretty cool i also really liked how they put the spotlights on the two pit crews i feel like that was one of my one of my issues though as well because i just i just think they need to might maybe clean it up a little bit but i like the idea i just hope they clean it up a little bit when it comes to that but i hope they continue to do that they put the spotlight on Corey lajoy's number seven team and Christopher Bell's number 20 team and showed off the pit crew, interviewed the pit crews, was constantly talking to the crew chiefs, actually hanging out on the pit boxes. I thought that was really cool. I always like to see the pit crews, the crew members, the crew chiefs get a little bit of a bigger spotlight because they're part of the team too. All right, now that I have commended NBC on their coverage, let's go over my final thoughts of this event. I've said it already twice this video. I was very, very pleasantly surprised with the event that we got. We had amazing racing. We had two wide racing, three wide racing. We even had four wide racing at times on some of these very crazy restarts. And even when they began to get strung out, you saw drivers that were better on the long runs, aka they had better tires at the end of the run, whether that was because of their driving or their setup. You saw them begin to fly through the field like a driver like Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell really struggled at the beginning portion of the run, but then towards the end of the run, he was probably the fastest car on the racetrack. Once again, I got to thank Goodyear. Goodyear did a great job, and I think everybody should commend Goodyear. I really hope there's no drivers talking off to the media saying that Goodyear did a bad job and that this was a messed up tire anything like that because that's one of the reasons why Goodyear does not take chances like this with a tire because then when a driver pops a tire and hits the wall they get right out of the car and make an interview like oh these tires are awful yeah these tires screwed me out of this race or 
we we don't need that. We need what we had today. That was great racing. I think that was the perfect tire. We had the tire at Bristol. I thought that might have been a little bit too extreme, but this seems like a more mellow version of that tire, and it, it was perfect. It was a perfect tire for racing. I wouldn't say it was a perfect race. It was a really great race. Overall, I was very impressed with the underdogs that we had out there competing like a Justin Haley, a Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Josh Berry. Josh Berry very well could have won this race if strategy went a little bit different. And then my final thought is that I really, I really love the fans' passion at Iowa Speedway. I see the videos. I see the coverage at the track. It's, it's amazing, the passion out there by the Iowa Speedway fans, the Iowa natives, the locals, the Midwestern motorsports community. They go really hard at Iowa Speedway. This was a good race. I really hope that Iowa Speedway is able to get back on next year's schedule. If you've seen my schedule prediction, I don't expect it to, but I hope I'm wrong because people have a big passion for this racetrack. They sold out the cup race, the Xfinity race, and the ARCA race this weekend. We need tracks like Iowa Speedway, like a Road America that have these big, huge fan bases. And they just the fans get really into the race. I really like to see that. But let me know your thoughts down below. What did you think about the race at Iowa Speedway? Do you expect it to be back on the schedule next year? What did you think about the tires? What did you think about the repave? I still don't really like the repave if they had it fully repaved or just didn't pave it at all i would i agree with christopher bell he said in his interview it would have been a barn burner but that'll do it for me thanks for watching my name is kyle aka racing boy short saying peace <laughs>